Greetings, everybody. My name is Bern Harris. I'm privileged to work for the Nelson Mandela Foundation and to be an adjunct professor at the Nelson Mandela University. Welcome uh, to today's event. This is a, a joint event for the university and for the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Thank you for joining us. I think we've got a really stimulating thought-provoking theme, the politics and the cultures of naming. Uh, there will be a focus on the name Mandela, but I'm sure many other names uh, will surface in the conversation. I'm sure the, the name Rhodes will surface. Uh, Antfort, uh, the city that was formerly known as Port Elizabeth, uh, the university that was formerly known as the University of Port Elizabeth. Let me just quickly outline the program. We'll start with a formal welcome from the Vice Chancellor, Professor Mutua. Uh, she'll give a framing to the conversation. And then Professor Crane Sudin has prepared a paper which he will formally present. He's prepared it especially for today's event. And we're privileged to have Judy Sakuza, uh, Nelson uh, Mandela Rhodes Foundation, apologies, Chief Executive, and Silo Hatang, Nelson Mandela Foundation Chief Executive, to offer responses to that presentation. And then hopefully we will get into a broader conversation. You're all welcome to post comments, questions. And as we draw to a close, uh, Professor Andre Kiert will offer a few final reflections before we wrap up. So without further ado, let me quickly introduce the Vice Chancellor. Uh, Professor Mutua has had a distinguished career as a, as a scholar, an activist, uh, public servant. Um, for me, uh, she exemplifies the, the concept of a servant leader. Uh, she's been at the helm of the university for what seems like forever. Um, I think profits, it's probably only three or four years now, but so much has happened in this period of time. And you've done so much work in that period. It seems a lot longer. Prof Mutua played a central role in the shift from the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University to the Nelson Mandela University. What at, at one level seems a very a simple shift, but looked at differently is profound. And the VC has also been driving uh, initiatives to make that shift signify in all kinds of ways, both for the university and for the publics that the university serves. Prof, we're always grateful to you, uh, not for leading from a distance, but for being engaged and supportive of uh, events like today. So without further ado, I'm gonna ask you to do the framing. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Professor Harris, our program director for the day. Uh, it is my pleasure and privilege to have the opportunity again to engage with this uh, group of outstanding scholars and colleagues and activists and students. Uh, so uh, I'm really very, very grateful uh, for this afternoon's opportunity. My own um, uh, contribution will be brief um, because I, I'm very much uh, looking forward to the engagement uh, that is um, substantive, that has been uh, prepared for this uh, event for us to contemplate the politics of naming. Thank you very much, Ben, for your uh, uh, kindness and generosity uh, and of having uh, been a, such a, a positive presence uh, in the rebuilding uh, of uh, our identity towards uh, the equalization mindset that uh, we've set out for ourselves. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I want to also uh, greet uh, Professor Crane Sodin, uh, who does not need much introduction as an outstanding scholar in our country. Uh, he is also a professor here at Nelson Mandela University. 
uh, uh, <coughs> welcome uh, Crane. Uh, Miss Judy Sikuza is our own alumnus. Uh, she's the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Rhodes Foundation. Uh, Mr. Silo Hatang, uh, who is also a very well-known leader uh, in the social justice space in our country and the long-serving CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the partner, a key partner of our university. Uh, Professor Andre Kiet, uh, our DVC for Engagement and Transformation uh, portfolio here at Mandela and, uh, and other DVCs that are in the audience uh, and other senior scholars uh, from our university and our sister universities that are, on, are in this audience. Our students, our staff, um, here at Mandela and at the sister institutions and the participants that are hailing from here, here in our country, Mzansi, and in our continent and further afield. Uh, all of you, uh, you are welcome this uh, afternoon. You are most welcome to this much anticipated seminar on the culture and politics of naming. The seminar aims to explore the academic expression of Nelson Mandela and the broader question of how naming cultures work. I have no doubt it will provoke and stimulate excellent debates and interest. Since the name change in June 2017, we have been on a process of deliberate, engaged in introspection on the meanings of Mandela for the Nelson Mandela University and how we as a university could, be, could best respond to ensure that the honor and responsibility of bearing the name of Mandela and all that it encompasses remains relevant in the university context. So for example, we had the Mandela Centenary Program from July 2018 to July 2019, as well as the Mandela Colloquium, various public lectures, and importantly, we formalized the relationship with the Nelson Mandela Foundation via a memorandum of agreement under which various projects are being implemented as I speak. And let me just pause here to say to Ms. Judy Sikuza and to Mr. Silo, Silo Hatang, how sincerely we as a university appreciate their continued support and involvement in our university and in this program. Having the backing and support of the Mandela Rhodes Foundation and the Nelson Mandela Foundation has provided us uh, with the most welcome gravitas to our own efforts at finding ourselves in this journey that we are on. One of our projects relate to the Mandela Scholarship Imperative, which saw us as a university initiating an idea of a possible transdisciplinary institute for Mandela studies. To this end, we are building a critical scholarly network that is orbiting teams. And we focus on four areas, which I'm going to name and list. Firstly, the essence of Mandela, as it relates to his leadership, his notion of social justice, and the value of education in changing the trajectory of the marginalized and the vulnerable in society. Secondly, the extent to which our foundational scholarly missions, uh, that of teaching, those of teaching and learning, research, as well as engagement are aligned to the distinct iconic brand of Madiba and more broadly to the vision and values of a free, equal and democratic world that he stood for and fought so hard for all his life. Thirdly, uh, we focus on the institutional culture practices and the symbols that will define our institution and help to break with the legacy of the past. Fourthly, we aim to um, make sure that the governance ethos of our council and related governance structures of the university that are charged with good corporate governance, uh, setting the ethical tone of the university and which represent our image in the public eye and which safeguard the reputation of the university. So with this in mind, this commitment translated into six scholarly programs that uh, we are embarking on, which uh, Ven did mention my sincere and active commitment to. 
Uh, these scholarly programs include uh, encompass our work on the revitalization of the humanities, the intellectual Mandela identity of the university. What does this mean for us? A focus on transdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approaches to scholarship, African intellectual traditions, our institutional research themes, which run across all our science domains and connecting deeply and generatively with our continent, the African continent. The April, the April workshop, which we had earlier this year, aimed at engaging with current Mandela-related scholarship and, ex and exploring fresh lines of inquiry and distilling critical questions which would be helpful for the processes related to configuring critical Mandela studies and informing the Mandela University identity and posture. This one, today's seminar, aims to explore the academic expression of Mandela and the broader question of how naming cultures work. It will offer an opportunity to look at the forms of engagement and contemplations that were involved in institutions on the names of prominent individuals, how these institutions embedded the ideals and commitments associated with these names into their institutional cultures and practices, and more critically, how they grappled or continue to grapple with the responsibility of carrying these names. I find it fascinating myself, for example, how the top of Mandela as an almost saint-like global icon of goodness, of selflessness and sacrifice for democracy changed in the South African context in the wake of the fallist movement and the death uh, of uh, the passing of Mamwini Matigizela Mandela to become in the minds of some of our more young people uh, a, 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 an image of a sellout. Of course, Mandela is not alone when it comes to the politics of idealization and sometimes subsequent demonization. What all this speaks to is the power and vested interests that are endowed in names and the contestations and challenges that arise with the passage of time and the socioeconomic and political transformation and transitions of societies over time. We therefore bear a serious responsibility as a university to ensure that we do the necessary work that will document and record for posterity our commitment to the scholarship that advances an academic expression of Mandela across the university and beyond. As the only university that bears his name, we must ensure that we offer the world a fearless and a broadly deliberative process of engagement an interrogation that reflects the multiplicity of views of the man and his life. It is my view, therefore, that this approach will be the more honest and the more honest one, and it will be in line with Mandela University's commitment to critical and engaged scholarship to which we are very committed. To our participants, as I move to conclude, program director, uh, our participants in the program, a warm welcome. We are grateful for your unending support always. A warm welcome also again to all of you who are attending on this platform. We do not take your presence and engagement with this process for granted. I hope that you will enjoy the seminar and rest assured uh, of our management, our council, and our university's scholars' commitment to give intellectual and programmatic flesh to the university's name of Mandela. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Thank you so much, VC. And I think we all hear again just how seriously the university takes this responsibility of the Mandela name. Much appreciated. And so, we now turn to the paper 
which has been prepared as a provocation uh, for today. And to say a few words about Professor Crane Sudin, um, for me, he is a scholar's scholar. Uh, he has the biggest personal library I've ever encountered in my life. You, it's not well represented in what you see on the screen. It's, it's massive. And every time he writes, and including the paper for today, which I've been privileged to read, is he will always use words that I've never encountered before. Uh, Crane, I hope you don't bandy around onomastics and toponymic theory too much uh, today. Um, Crane is widely published. Uh, he, he's a former deputy vice chancellor at UCT, former CEO of the Human Sciences Research Council. We're really privileged to have him with us today. Crane, over to you. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much, Vern, and um, uh, I'll try to be careful. <laughs> um, so first of all, thank you very much, Vice-Chancellor. Uh, it, it's a great honor to be uh, associated with the uh, Nelson Mandela University uh, and to be a colleague uh, of you and uh, many of you at the uh, university. And big thank you also to uh, my friend, Andre Kiet. Um, thank you, Ben. Um, and um, uh, I'd like to also say great honor to be in the presence of uh, uh, Selo Hatang um, and um, Judy Sakuza. Um, Judy, I don't know you, but I, I, I've known Silo for a long time and uh, uh, both my colleagues Vern and uh, Seda I know hold you in high regard so it's really great to be in your presence too. So colleagues I'm going to uh, take you through a presentation here from which uh, and let me say this at the uh, very outset I have learned learned a lot. I did learn big words here uh, Vern and I will try to uh, uh, put those words behind us uh, quite quickly because they, 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 they can get in the way a little bit. Um, so let me start, uh, colleagues, and I hope that um, the uh, presentation uh, is, is clear to all of you. Uh, is, is the right screen up there, Van, for you? Yeah, it is. Thank you, Craig. All right. So, um, uh, Right, so what I'm going to do in this uh, presentation, colleagues, is uh, do two things. I'm first of all going to uh, very quickly get through this whole field of, 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 of onomastics, uh, and I'll come to that in a minute. Um, onomastics is, is, is this field of study uh, which looks at how things, uh, how places in particular uh, get their names. Uh, and then I want to land up talking about uh, the implications of the university choosing this name Mandela uh, and, 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 and what uh, are carried in those, uh, the significance of, 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 of this name uh, Mandela. Uh, it's important, I think, for all of us historically for the record here to, to know that uh, uh, this change of name uh, comes as a result of uh, um, a, a, a rationale, an argument made by uh, Professor uh, Swartz, the previous Vice Chancellor, uh, and, uh, um, and Prof Mutwa, uh, in an argument which they put to the university's council, where they uh, suggested there that uh, the university, in taking on this name, uh, uh, should become the preeminent academic expression of, of Mandela. But they also said we need to make clear. Uh, what the implications of uh, taking on this name are, and um, and, um, and and it's towards uh, surfacing some of those implications that I take on this particular exercise here. So I've said a little bit about uh, onomastics uh, already. Uh, all I think I need to say here is that, uh, well, first of all, I learned a lot. I had to go and read up these journals which deal with onomastics, which uh, I didn't know about. Uh, and it was quite a, 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 a big surprise uh, for me how much there actually is. Um, uh, but simply to say this about onomastics, um, 
that the field for a long time until recently uh, has been a pretty kind of uh, uh, antiquarian. I use the word antiquarian field yet. You know, it, 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 it didn't engage uh, often with the, uh, uh, the complexities around processes of naming. Um, but the newer uh, participants in this, in the new scholars coming into this field have injected uh, a great deal of, 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 of texture into the field. It is now a whole lot more um, conscious of, of, of the politics of, of, of naming. And um, uh, it's introduced what it's called critical toponymy um, uh, or critical toponymical theory uh, in, into the field. And this definition that you have on the screen here, colleagues, um, tries to capture what this theory uh, is, is, is all about. It's a, it's, it's, it, it tries to analyze the way in which, the ways in which political regimes and movements, uh, and I suppose uh, 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 people in authority such as ourselves, use place names to claim territories, erase linguistic traces of original populations, gain political legitimacy, delegitimize other political forces, naturalize certain versions of history and, and silence dissent. Um, these people coming in to talk now uh, in defense of, of a critical take on, on naming uh, are at pains to argue that it's necessary to strip this onomastics field, to strip naming from its innocence and to come to uh, confront the fact that actually naming is, 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 is a deeply political uh, practice. So that's the theory. And I hope that it, it's, it's, it's not too overwhelming uh, in terms of, of, of uh, um, um, what I have tried to put across. I'd like to move now to uh, a quick section, section in this paper in which I talk about um, uh, uh, the naming experience of, of South African universities uh, over the last uh, 25 years. So we now have 26 universities uh, in the country. And here's a little fact file about these 26 universities. 15 of them have had their names changed since 1994. Uh, really interesting that. Uh, six of those names are anthroponymic. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll use that word uh, deliberately to uh, distinguish between the, the, the word toponymic, which I used earlier, which essentially uh, comes to, to describe uh, the, the physical features which give a place a particular denotation or notation. Anthroponymic is when you uh, name somebody after a figure, a, a, a person. So we have six universities in, in the country at the moment which are anthroponymic. 20 have toponyms. In other words, they take their names from the places uh, in which they are. Five of those names are derived from their home cities or towns, Johannesburg, Pretoria, Durban, uh, um, and Cape Town, uh, Stellenbosch and so on. One carries a national designation and 16 uh, have uh, regional uh, denotations. So over two thirds of, of, of universities have had their names changed uh, in the last while. Only 10 institutions have had no names, no changes in their, in their names. So this is the, uh, the interesting point that I, uh, um, um, in looking at this experience, uh, took away from this, is that actually over this last period, it is striking about how little controversy um, these name changes uh, have precipitated. Only once, uh, and that was in 2014, did we have a protest around a name change. And that was with respect to uh, Madunsa. Um, and uh, the students deliberately uh, raised a, a controversy around uh, Safako Machato uh, and, and, and said that um, they were really anxious about uh, the loss of what they thought would be the prestige of Madunsa uh, in, in, this, in this name change. Um, but I do want to qualify uh, exactly what I've said here now. So while there have been uh, very few uh, public, uh, uh, any forms of, 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 
argument and dissent around uh, the name changes of institutions. Interestingly, that is not the case when it comes to uh, uh, institutes, places, or rather places of interest, residences inside of institutions. Uh, inside of institutions, um, even right now, at this very moment, uh, there are big debates going on around a whole lot of institutions, uh, uh, names uh, for residences, uh, for uh, um, uh, marks, uh, landmark buildings uh, inside of campuses and, and so on. There's a, uh, uh, the, the, there was a really big controversy uh, going on at UCT around uh, the name of, 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 of Chris Hani. Stillenbosch University has a a, an issue right now around the change of, of name of, of, the, uh, of the Wilcox building, which is the name of the humanities uh, building. Uh, and that name is being changed to uh, Protoa. Uh, and um, uh, the, con the controversy isn't always publicly available, but you know, going on to the internet, the, uh, the backdrop is, is, is really quite intense. Uh, you, you see South Africa, uh, uh, actually uh, revealed in its full complexity um, in, 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 in those uh, interchanges. The one university uh, which hasn't changed its name, but around which there has been a great deal of trouble is of course Rhodes. And, and, and Vern, uh, and thanks uh, Vern for introducing that. Vern raised it earlier. Um, uh, and this is all in the wake of, of of the uh, fallest uh, period in our uh, university uh, history um, after 2015. It was really interesting. I was on the campus uh, at the time when uh, this controversy uh, around the, the, the name was, was bubbling. Uh, and for a sustained period of about two years, and it's less so now, but still there, uh, uh, people, members of the university, uh, deliberately described themselves uh, as being members of the, uh, the university, university currently named Rhodes. Uh, that's gone away a little bit, as I said, um, uh, but, but the issue remains very much alive. Um, uh, the, the, the debate there was brought to a, a, a conclusion, um, uh, not satisfactorily, I think, when the University Council decided um, that it wouldn't change the name. And it essentially came to that uh, conclusion by saying that they, they themselves uh, couldn't come to any kind of uh, agreement. Um, uh, but there was also uh, in the explanation from the council uh, that there were consequences um, uh, that they were really concerned about. Uh, those consequences, and I use the term a little later, I, I, I argue are all about commodification uh, um, and um, the ways in which the institution essentially is worried about this named commodity uh, um, being being changed and what the impact it might have on on um, the university in, in terms of the relationships with donors and so on. So so. Um, uh, the point that I make in the paper here uh, about what had happened there is, is that the, the, the matter has been temporarily resolved, uh, uh, but it actually hasn't dealt with the, uh, the, the issues. Uh, and you see that um, um, in the ways in which um, uh, I, I make the point here that the pragmatics have not helped in surfacing possible ways uh, in which the university will hold on to its name specifically in educational terms. And I'd like to be provocative here, you know, that, that they've, 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 they've not actually helped us in, in thinking about um, how you can, uh, if they want to hold on to a name, but, but still make it an educational uh, event. Um, this slide quickly, uh, and I'll pass uh, by it very quickly, is about, uh, um, uh, our legislation, the South African Higher Education Act, um, and the guidance that this act gives to name changes. Uh, I, I say in the slide simply that, that um, there's very little guidance given uh, in this uh, Higher Education Act to uh, how universities should go about um, um, uh, taking on and, and, and 
and possibly changing uh, their names. Uh, the Department of, of Higher Education has, uh, and, and I say that in the paper, given guidance and saw Plaiki and Pumalanga uh, needed to take on names. They did institute a public process, which was very useful. Um, but in the act itself, there's, there's very little guidance. So let's look at universities uh, who have taken on entre entrepreneurs, who, who have taken on the names of, of public figures. And there are, as I say, there's six um, in, in South Africa. Now going through the uh, public uh, uh, documentation, which is available around these names, uh, um, uh, there are some commonalities uh, in which is in which one can see what is going on. Um, I focus in this slide here on Saul Plaiki alone because I think this, this particular slide gives you a sense of what these anthroponymic uh, 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 institutions, named institutions, uh, are doing with their names. So they all do essentially what Saul Plaiki says here. Saul Plaiki University says we take pride in the fact that our university bears the name of Saul Plaiki a visionary South African intellectual. We are privileged and honored to bear the name of this intellectual giant of South Africa. His legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of all who are part of this young university. Um, most of the universities in our country are doing this. They sometimes will attach uh, to uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the responsibility of carrying that name, maybe, maybe, uh, a public lecture, but but that that is 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 all that they do. Um, um, so they they're honouring their namesakes, but uh, actually have uh, uh, done very little. Uh, I'm going to say beyond that, they honour, but very little beyond that. Uh, internationally, uh, the experience I'd like to argue is pretty much the same. Uh, um, I found two really important. Uh, uh, exceptions to this rule. Um, uh, and um, the first one, now many of you will, will not know this university. Um, the first one is Marcus Garvey Pan African University. It's a Ghanaian university. Um, it was established around about uh, 2011, 2012, 2013 um, um, by Danny Nabudere, whom, whom some of you will, will know. Um, and it's led by an extraordinary uh, sociologist. Uh, his name is Professor Lutu. I've been very honored in a sense to be in this man's company uh, a few times. Uh, and Professor Lutu says, our name is not just a matter of choice of name. Uh, Garvey understood the importance of grassroots movements and the, and the purpose of returning to the roots. He understood the role of reclamation. Uh, the commitment the institution makes as its core mythological principle is to locate the university within communities instead of outside. Its research, for example, amongst pastoralist communities is aimed at stimulating a dialogue between researchers and pastoralists for the purpose of pooling knowledge produced by academic scholars and practitioners so that such collected knowledge would be available to all users. The university makes this essential commitment to the uh, knowledge production uh, exercise uh, and responsibility that it has yet to what it calls Africology. So this is a really crucial uh, institution uh, or, or, or example that, that, that we have, uh, that we, we can look at. Um, uh, I'll make another comment about this in, uh, in, in, in a minute. The second university that I'd like to look at is uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University at JNU. Uh, a very much more famous university. Many of you will be um, will know a little bit about JNU. The wonderful thing about JNU is, is that when it was established, it was established through uh, the absorption of a few institutions in, in Delhi. When it was established, it sought to uh, embody uh, the values of Nehru uh, in the form of the university. So the Marcus Garvey uh, uh, takes on that responsibility, you know, by looking at the knowledge uh, uh, production um, mandate that it has. Uh, Nehru University, JNU, does it by looking at its form, its structure. Uh, and so what, what it has done uh, it, uh, was to decide not to have faculties, but uh, 
uh, preferring instead to bring the disciplines within a few broad uh, and inclusive entities called schools. And there was interactive ambit, a place the more specialized units uh, called centers. So there are lots of units and centers uh, inside of uh, the, the university. And these aren't just uh, uh, research uh, um, uh, institutes, they're also teaching institutes. So the important thing about these two uh, uh, examples that I give, one is about um, um, the research agenda, and the other one is about it, its basic governance uh, structure. And, it, and it's a really, they, they are both really uh, uh, very uh, useful examples to be uh, looking at and, and, and working with. Uh, I need to say this, and, and this is part of the provocation, that neither of these two institutions is in a good shape right now, neither of them. Um, and um, uh, uh, how this bears on the names that they have uh, is I think a really important thing to be, uh, to be thinking about because their names don't guarantee that they actually uh, um, um, are able to uh, not only survive, but do the things that they, they, they want. So what do we take away then from those South African examples and from these two uh, uh, international examples? There are three points. The first point is that we don't have strong models for how universities work critically with their names. Uh, the this, this second point, and this takes us back to onomastics, is that these naming practices and these naming cultures are largely uh, in the uh, 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 semiotics in the words of, 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 of uh, onomastics, they are denotive. They, they, they point to a mark. Uh, that mark, however, is, is, is wide, wide open to uh, interpretation. The third point is that they, they, they offer no guidance in, in my experience, except for those two examples that I raised here, for how the university deals with these critical mandates of uh, of, of teaching, researching, and social engagement. Now, let me just uh, come to uh, the end uh, in thinking about uh, Mandela. Um, and I'd like to make the point here that, um, um, that uh, 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 NMU is very much more uh, uh, in the model, in the tradition of, of Marcus Garvey and Nehru. Uh, than the other institutions, and um, and that's that's a really important thing to say. I mean, one could, um, in an exercise like this, single out the Nelson Mandela uh, in terms of the the lengths and the uh, steps that it has taken uh, to giving substance to what it name what its name uh, 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 signifies and is all about. But there's still a lot of work uh, 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 to be done. Um, so. Um, and, and this work is in process, and this exercise is part of that work. And this work will build on the rationale, on the, uh, uh, the uh, presentation that uh, Professors Swartz and Mutwa made to the council. Uh, they, uh, talk, they spoke to three points uh, in, that, in that rationale. Uh, they spoke to the ways in which Nelson Mandela uh, needs to come to inform teaching and learning. Uh, and the way in which they did that is to, to, to talk about the, an insistently collaborative and socially rooted uh, approach to teaching and learning. With respect to research, they insisted um, that a, a problem solving uh, research agenda, agenda was absolutely essential. Um, and with social engagement, they emphasize the, the great questions of, of justice and equality. So we have a starting point here. And this starting point is, is, is uh, um, a, a great platform for thinking about, and I'm deliberately going to use this word, the post-colonial task of thinking about how our universities uh, contribute to a, a world which is inclusive, free, just, and equal. But I do need to say to you that many universities are already taking on that rhetoric. Uh, and there's opportunity here to be deepening and giving even more specificity to what Nelson Mandela 
what the name of Nelson Mandela means uh, uh, to, um, to that mandate. Uh, and towards that, I'd like to suggest that it's the questions of who, it's the question, question of what, and the questions of why which matter. Who participates in the process uh, of, of, of taking on this name and on what terms uh, is, is absolutely important uh, to be uh, uh, transparent and clear about. The questions of, of what goes to this uh, uh, issue of, of which Mandela we are talking about. Um, um, we've already begun in the documentation to talk about the essence of Mandela, uh, but I think we now need to be clearer about what that essence uh, stands for. Um, if, if we wish to, uh, are we open up to talking about essences? Uh, are there possibly multiple interpretations uh, that we could bring to the name? If we were to do so, who's going to say it's all right? Um, uh, are we going to have in place a process which uh, authorizes uh, how the names might be uh, used? Should our approach be uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Mandela, deferential, reflective, or, or self-critical. So what I'm saying is that there's a great deal of, 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 of work to be done here now. So if the institution is to be reflective of Mandela uh, and critical, what would such critique look like? So this is my last slide, uh, uh, colleagues. So uh, what I'm saying is that we have in our uh, experience of universities very little guidance to go with uh, in terms of how to embed a name, to give it, uh, uh, to use the vice chancellor's uh, 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 terms, academic expression. There's, there are very few international examples. Um, uh, one point uh, I do want to make though, is that the Christian universities or religiously named universities around all of us do much better, uh, just, just to make that, that, that point. They, they're able to, to, to take the names of their, uh, their, the figures on which they are based very much more practically into um, this, their, 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 um, um, their mandates. Uh, but we have in, 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 in JNU and uh, uh, um, the Marcus Garvey University uh, examples. Um, uh, and, and those examples, uh, I think, are really quite challenging. Um, the, the challenge of thinking about the form of the university now, I think is uh, an intense challenge because I, 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 I'd like to leave this point with you because I think it's in the form uh, that the current university around the world is, is instituted uh, that the power uh, of uh, the conservatism of the university is reproduced. Uh, and that's a really critical thing to, to be thinking about. And then, of course, there's uh, this question of, of knowledge and how, how we work with knowledge. The way in which the disciplines are reproduced um, is a, a major issue which, which we are, are, are needing to think about. But I think that we have a start. Um, and uh, there uh, is a lot of possibility here with which we can uh, be uh, already working with. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, Prof Mutua for um, um, uh, kicking us off like that. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd like to uh, bring this to a close here, Vern, and say thank you. Thank you so much, Crane. That was just a beautifully shaped and, and succinct provocation. Um, I'm going to turn to, to Judy now, uh, Chief Executive of the Mandela Rhodes Foundation. Uh, Judy is a, a specialist in, in organizational development and, and leadership development, um, public intellectual, uh, tutu fellow. Um, I always look forward to reading her thought pieces in the Daily Maverick. Um, Judy, you carry a, a, a responsibility in terms of names, two names that arguably pull in different directions. So really looking forward to hearing your response to Crane, but also your reflection on the line of inquiry. Over to you, Judy. Thank you so much, Vern, and good afternoon to everyone who's joining the conversation. Um, it's a great privilege for me to be in this discussion because there's, there's a lot of history that continues to follow me regarding the Mandela name. 
I was saying to some of the panelists uh, before we joined the broader audience that um, I was a student at the old UPE in 2004, when the initial name change question was, was coming into effect as the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University at the time. And I think as young students, um, there was already a, a beginning of a conversation and a debate of what does this name change mean about the identity of the university? And of course now with the more recent, more deeper conversations and actually moving it away from just naming it after the metropolitan, but rather thinking through Mandela, the person, the legacy and the implications for the institution. So I wanna thank you, uh, Prof Sudin for your provocation. I really enjoyed reading your paper. And I think some of the key things that you raise here that speak very deeply to what we do as the Mandela Rhodes Foundation are the following. That in fact, naming is a deeply political practice. Um, and I think that's, that's quite an important point to raise, especially as we think about our name as the Mandela Rhodes Foundation. And that on that basis, it is then very important to actually work critically with those names. Um, and I think as we reflect on what the Nelson Mandela University is trying to do, thinking through how can we actually be socially rooted within our context as we work with these names? Um, how do we make sure that we're looking at questions of justice and equality? And I really liked also your provocation about which part of Mandela, because of course we also find ourselves navigating this question, particularly because our purpose as the Mandela Rhodes Foundation is to work with the next generation of young leaders who we are meant to be preparing to go out into the world and navigate the complex realities of today. So which, which Mandela are we asking them to be? Are we asking them to be the young Mandela uh, who, uh, you know, as we all know, is symbolized as someone who had very strong ideals for the country and was also willing to go um, um, to, to particular lengths uh, to achieve that? Are we thinking about the Mandela who was in prison, who reflected very deeply on the oppressor and, and, and the oppressed and what that meant inside of him. The Mandela during the negotiations, the Mandela during his presidency or the Mandela after his post-president um, terms. So I think this leads very nicely then in thinking about how we as the Mandela Rose Foundation have grappled with this name and, and how uh, really from the beginning uh, of our formation, there was a real intentionality that this name speaks to a broader part of Madiba's legacy. I always remind people that Madiba already had two foundations by the time we were formed. We we're actually the last born of his three official legacy organizations. And so he didn't actually need an additional um, foundation. But chance and opportunity seem to have met uh, around 2002 the Rhodes Trust in Oxford was celebrating its centenary anniversary and from a growing sense of global responsibility wanted to figure out how can they bring back some of the wealth that Rhodes had made back to South Africa and back to the continent as and in a, in a sense as a symbolic act of both reconciliation and reparations and so in thinking about who would represent that at that period, Nelson Mandela, of course, uh, was the kind of the global figure that represented um, this idea. And so we often say to people that <laughs> Mandela was very, very conscious of the tension uh, between his own life and legacy and that of Cecil John Rhodes. And it's actually important to be clear that Mandela didn't seek to sanitize Rhodes' image, nor to redeem him through juxtaposing their names, which is sometimes claimed to be the case. The partnership appealed to Mr. Mandela because it provided the opportunity to say, can we really, in, in fact, this partnership was a provocation in and of itself. It was asking the citizens, can we actually come together across historical divides? Can we heal the wounds of the past? Can we create a future? that is actually built on true systemic inclusion. And so the provocative name of the Mandela Rhodes Foundation is really an eternal call to all of the beneficiaries of colonialism to participate in and contribute in fixing the damage and helping to create a more humane world. And when you go deeper into perhaps understanding some of the frustrations that 
our young students might have now and, 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 and the original roads must fall core was in fact the question of whether or not everyone in the society is actually willing to do the work to create more humane futures. Is everyone ready to go across the vines or does it feel like only specific groups are the only ones who keep putting their hands? Does it feel like the institutions that these students are coming into continue to, to feel oppressive, continue to feel like the curriculum doesn't represent them, continue to feel like the culture and the space and the institution represents a space that doesn't think about in inclusion. And so in a way, Mandela's message through this partnership was not just to forgive, forget, and accept the status quo. It was a call to say, we have to work together to achieve social justice. This partnership was trying to express Mandela's vision of not just reconciliation, which I think a lot of people love to use the term in referring to Mandela, but actually it was about reconciliation and redress being two inseparable um, partners. And I think that's the big, big uh, powerful intention of our partnership. So when we then think about our own institutional goals and practices, you know, our work as, you know, as a, a foundation that funds, honors and masters students to study across South Africa, the heart of it is our leadership development program. So this is where the values and principles and vision that Madiba had gets fully expressed through um, the, our program. And so we have four key principles as a foundation, those being reconciliation, education, entrepreneurship, and leadership. And we try to really equip our scholars with an understanding of complexity and the limitation of binary thinking, which Mr. Mandela was very renowned um, for navigating. What we do in our program is we focus on helping our students really understand the injustices of the past uh, and the individual and societal healing that needs to happen as a result of that. We try to develop a scholar who is able to hold complexity because the very virtue of being a Mandela Road scholar means you have to sit with a, a, you know, a juxtaposition of complexity being able to reconcile opposites and finding a way forward in, 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 in a sense, the way in which Madiba represented that ability to hold two complexities and yet find what you would call the third way. And so our name invites us to see tremendous capacity to flourish and to work together when we transcend our fear and division. And when you look at uh, South Africa and the continent more broadly, you can see that a lot of what continues to hold us back um, in our division is this fear, is that we don't even know each other. And so some would say that, you know, what I'm talking about here is just a nostalgic yearning for the rainbow nation or that it's nice, Judy, it's really nice to hear you say this, but, you know, some of this stuff is really built on the pain and silencing of others. And I think it's important to recognize that pain, to recognize that when we listen to some of our Mandela Road scholars say, 27 years later, my mom still lives in a shack. And so for me, it's very difficult to think about reconciling across divides because I have not seen the structural, social, economic changes that make this promise a reality. And so I do think that the truth is a little bit more complex, of course, when we, th when we talk about what it means to do this work. For us, it's uh, to co-create um, the space of truly seeing and healing and reimagining our humanity actually requires courage. It requires us to be willing to bleed, to sweat, to have tears. It requires nothing less than the confrontation of the Mandelas and the roads that are within ourselves and between us as a society. And when we think then about this responsibility for this name, as I wrap up, we believe that the Mandela way of leadership is very relevant and is much needed, especially in the very polarized world that we find ourselves in. The Mandela Road's name in particular challenges us to do the brave inner work that Madiba had to do in prison during the negotiations and during his term as president and beyond. And I think we mustn't see this in, the, in a kind of soft, touchy-feely kind of way. I think many of us will remember that moment when during the negotiations, you know, there was there was a, there was just this very hair raising moment where Mandela was really tired and felt like these guys weren't coming to the party as was discussed behind the scenes. And he actually stood up in front of national TV and he called out the clack. You know, so when we talk about courage, it's both about saying 
we are willing to put a hard line uh, on, on acts and behaviors that don't move us towards a humanity, but at the same time, are we able to see each other, hear each other, and try and find ways? So this requires a reflecting and engaging in all of our parts, accepting the oppressor and the oppressed, accepting the light and the darkness within us. And I think this inner reckoning with our fractures and our contradictions as individuals and as a society can perhaps begin to be a portal for some honest conversations beyond the fear and the guilt and the shame and the anger that seems to be present in those conversations uh, when we think about these dichotomies. That when we can truly hear and see each other's humanities, we might move beyond the binaries. And I think this is a uh, first important step in being able to facilitate extraordinary compromises and partnerships as Madiba displayed. Today, reconciliation has become a dirty word, but in this imperfect and complex world, principled compromise is really the way that can begin to help us to see each other um, uh, and move forward. In carrying our name, we bear responsibility to nurture and stand for this leadership, a leadership that can be creative in finding new ways to solve our intractable societal challenges and do so in a way that transcends fear towards an ethic of creating more humanity, more love, and a reimagined African Renaissance that brings dignity to all our people. I thank you. Sure, thank you so much, Judy. It's, 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 it's tough for me to move on in the program. One wants to just sit for a while and let your words land. Um, I, I have a number of questions springing to mind. Um, and I hope they will be taken up during the conversation. Uh, thank you again. And just to remind people, if you want to post questions in that chat space, you can start doing that already. I see a question's already been posted to Crane. Um, one of the questions I'd love to circle back to both for Mandela Rhodes and, and for the university is um, the, the iconography, the, the imagery, the branding, um, the, the logo, um, how does that um, speak to the name? I, I think that's a, a, an important line of inquiry as well. Um, so uh, in terms of responses, we, we move now to Silo Hatang, Chief Executive of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Um, again, hardly need to introduce him, probably the most interviewed person in South Africa. Uh, professionally, Silo emerged from the humble space of archives and, and heritage practice. He's a former director of the South African History Archive, uh, former spokesperson of the Human Rights Commission, and like Judy, is a, a Tutu fellow. Um, he's won a number of international awards. Um, it's over to you, Silo. Hard act to follow after these two inputs, but looking forward to yours as well. Thank you. No, that, that, uh, that's what uh, crossed my mind, uh, Veno, uh, that uh, I should have uh, insisted on uh, uh, being the first so that I just do introductions and leave it. Because um, uh, Prof. Uh, Sudin tends to push you uh, very hard. So, so thank you so much. Let me thank Prof. Motua. Um, you know, uh, for hosting this event. But you know, the the the, the most important thing is that uh, Prof. Motor tends to be so present, uh, a seven leader indeed. That uh, as as Vern said, um, I, I, we have these uh, uh, catch up meetings. In most instances, VCs are too busy uh, to to get themselves uh, involved with those kind of meetings. Yet she sits in. And, uh, and does those kind of uh, meetings. So I want to thank you, Prof, and to, to say that uh, you, you're showing us the way um, it, it should be done. Thank you very much. Let me also thank uh, Judy for, for that input um, that you've made. Um, then thank uh, Prof Sudin for the uh, provocation. Um, you've named the challenge of carrying a name, a big name at that uh, very precisely. Um, how to honor the name and contribute to making a just world with it uh, remains a challenge. And I, I, and, um, I have to say that, uh, like Vern said, uh, when I read your article the first time, I had to go back uh, the second time to just get those concepts going in my head uh, because um, uh, one felt like you needed another jab 
um, to deal with the headache of the concepts uh, that uh, you used. So, so thank you very much uh, for, for that. Um, so so it, also the, that an institution carries a name in order to mobilize it for the institution's task in the world. In other words, you don't carry the name just for the name's sake, but actually it's to change something, to impact lives. I want to use the few minutes uh, to reflect on key lessons learned by the NMF uh, through more than 20 years of carrying the name Mandela um, and also even being the, uh, the IP holders of the name. We've made mistakes, we've missed many opportunities and we've learned what I'll call the three big temptations of a big name. And, and uh, you'll see that um, in part, uh, the, the, this also is what you mentioned, Prof, and, and uh, in fact, Judy too. And the first one is to be uh, proprietorial about the name, to think you own a name and its associated legacy. Uh, in the case of Madiba, the NMF believes that his legacy does not belong to any one organization, uh, one movement, uh, one family, one country, even though, of course, uh, South Africa and South Africans tend to just say, no, he belongs to us, he's ours. Uh, we belong, we believe that uh, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, the wrong way of using and understanding the, uh, the name. We've made that mistake of feeling that because we own the IP, therefore, he belongs to us too. Um, so the, the ANC had also have, has also made those kind of mistakes where it would um, demand that others not use it. If you are in the opposition, you can't say Mandela and, uh, and uh, get away with it. Uh, you get pushed to uh, justify why you need to use the name. It belongs in principle to everyone who shares his vision of a just world and is committed to working for that world. The challenge is not to protect the name, rather it is how to most effectively mobilize it for the work that needs to be done. And one is reminded um, of Madiba uh, back in 2008, uh, when he gave his last speech in, uh, in London. Uh, and I think that's, that's when he was giving away his legacy, uh, giving away his, uh, his um, name also, because uh, he said, it's in your name uh, to help uh, change the world for the better, because the world now in 2008 is in a worse condition. Um, now it's, it's in your hands to try change that. Um, I'm reminded of this uh, proprietorial uh, thinking um, that uh, I, was, I, I, was, I was in uh, Scotland. I went to Scotland uh, maybe about 10 years ago and uh, uh, our head of governance then uh, uh, says to me, you know, there's an organization there that's been using the name and, um, and a few colleagues say, no, you, you must uh, help make sure that they understand that they can't use them name the, the way they are. This was an institution that was dealing with refugees, etc. So I go there armed with a, a note uh, from, from uh, the, my predecessor with um, another note saying, actually, you need to try uh, modify how you've been using Madiba's name. And I go over and as I get into the CEO's office, he opens the door, he welcomes me very warmly and he points behind his door. There's a beautifully framed uh, letter uh, from Madiba saying, uh, I'm so happy that you can use my name um, and use it uh, in the best way you can change the, the, the lives of others. And the letter was clear that uh, here, um, being proprietorial doesn't help, uh, but it's, uh, it's about sharing. So I, I took a photo of this and uh, uh, sheepishly sent the, uh, the photo back uh, to South Africa saying, guys, I failed in my mission, uh, but uh, you, I'll explain later how that failed. The second one is to be custodial. It's linked to what I said just now, to think that you, you get to decide who is in and who is out who gets to enter and sit at the table, who is on our side and who is on the other side. Um, there's space for everyone at the table, I would argue, but there's also constant uh, contestation, uh, sometimes unnecessarily. Um, I want to reflect on uh, uh, th that uh, the, the NMF has uh, always to deal with uh, three Mandela families, three strands of Mandela family, uh, two other legacy organizations, as Judy said earlier on. 
nearly 100 institutions which carry his name. Every other day, there's someone who sent me a note saying, oh, by the way, we also carry the name and we'd like to just make sure that you know of our, of our presence, that we are also um, part of you. And uh, in, in other instances, it's a, a tree that Madiba would have planted somewhere. Uh, that then makes the, the institution feel that uh, they, they also uh, are in the, the custodians of this legacy because here's a tree that continues to grow um, on, on our fields uh, because we, it was planted by Madiba um, in, in our honor. So recently we had to host um, a mediation session again about this uh, question of being custodial. We own this thing. Uh, recently, we had to host a, a mediation session uh, when we had um, the name uh, being used in a sporting event. And uh, there was then contestation about uh, who gave you permission to do this and uh, how, how, do you, how do we share in it uh, instead of you uh, just uh, running riot, as it were. The, the third one is to be protective. And this is where we, we've made our biggest mistake. Madiba gave us a, a strong directive oh, when we were uh, redirecting the, um, the NMF with a new mandate uh, he gave us in 2007. And uh, he, he, he then told uh, particularly Vern, he said, don't, don't, don't protect me. You don't have to protect me. Our mission is to protect the record, the evidence, the archive, and the spaces for inter interrogating them. Um, and I think uh, if you, 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 we look back at uh, the Feast Must Fall and the Fallist movement and how we engaged with the, the narrative of Madiba as a sellout, it's a good example of how uh, protectionalism doesn't help. Um, uh, we decided to engage with those uh, actively to the annoyance sometimes of uh, those who believe that we should be going out to, to slam, to make sure that those who are doing this uh, understand that you can't do that. And we, 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 we resisted that. And we, we kind of uh, made sure that uh, people understood that we, we, we sharing this space with all. Um, and we want them to be part of it. Um, because uh, if, if, uh, if the more protective you try to be, the more mistakes you're gonna make. Uh, because uh, then you have a situation where uh, the, 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 the fullest, then always uh, think, oh, now I'm, I, I even have a greater license to, to go on the attack. So I would host uh, some of the leaders of the fullest, fullest movement here at the foundation. And listen to them attentively here in my office. Um, sometimes they would speak for an hour without me having even said a word while taking notes. And they would uh, attack Madiba in his, uh, his uh, education policies, his land uh, policies, his... Um, uh, failure to uh, protect South Africa and get uh, people prosecuted for the crime of apartheid, etc. And having listened, I then invite them to the archive, um, which is what I was saying that we, we are here to protect the record and, uh, and share it widely uh, with those who care to, to listen to what the record says. And I'd pull out, uh, the, I'd say, you, you said that you are angry with Madiba on education, for example, pull out a, a note uh, from Madiba, and most of them in his own handwriting, where he would then uh, explain what uh, he was confronted with at that time. Uh, you're saying that he sold out uh, by, by, um, uh, by wanting peace uh, with the, the Afrikaners. Well, this is what he says in his own handwriting, how you he, he, he observed his dealings with, uh, with uh, uh, Phil Yun, for example. And, uh, and, and through that, I found that most of the full, fullest uh, leaders uh, would walk out, uh, some saying, I have goosebumps, you know, but uh, they also have a, an obligation not to be seen as sellouts to the legacy. So they, they must continue with, the, uh, with the, um, the, the, the narrative that they have to push. And, and they then could get out of uh, the archive with a great understanding and a moderated uh, view of this sellout uh, um, uh, view that they, they would have held when they came in. And I think that's what we, we all should uh, try and, uh, and do, not to, to, to be protectionist uh, in, in our approach to, to the legacy. We still don't always get it right, by the way, Prof. Uh, Sudin. Um, uh, 
um, but we 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 know the dangers um, that are there. Um, we know that uh, there's a lot that needs to be done to make uh, the, the name understood and, 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 uh, and we keep uh, trying our best to get it right. Um, and we are hoping that at some point we, we will um, uh, look out and say, well, we tried, uh, maybe we failed in most, most instances, but we gave it our best shot. So it's in our hands, uh, those who carry the name to always try and uh, share it as widely as possible, not to be territorial. Thank you very much. Thank you, as always, uh, Sirilo. Uh, the importance uh, of that space for contestation. Um, I want to circle back to, to Crane now. You've, you've heard Judy's response um, and, and Sirilo's response. Uh, would you like to come in at all um, and engage those two inputs before mm. we open it up more widely? Yeah, no, thanks very much, Van. And and thank you to uh, Judy and Sida. Um, uh, I, I really only want to make two points, Ben. Um, and the first point, which uh, I think has, has great uh, uh, resonance for uh, uh, the university in thinking about uh, um, particularly, uh, or the specificity of, of, of the name Mandela, uh, and um, I love the way in which both you, Judy, and 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 Silo have done this. Is is to talk about the complex Mandela, uh, and 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 simply the potential in that complex Mandela for me is a is a really important uh, model to be working with in thinking about uh, just what this country is all about. Um, and and um, you, 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 you said, Judy, getting away from the binaries, we are totally trapped in binary thinking. Uh, the, 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 the mode in which uh, much of our public engagement happens, uh, particularly now, uh, you know, around this pandemic is you either here or you there, you know, and there's, 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 there's no appreciation for thinking about com complexity. Uh, and this leads me then on to the second point, um, uh, which, which I want to make uh, about, uh, about the university uh, and to build it off both what uh, Celo, you and Judy said here is that the university is about complexity. It can't be any other way. Uh, a university is, is only uh, uh, in a sense, uh, in its essence, uh, wanting to manage this complexity. The minute the university reduces this complexity to these binaries or to these simplicities or platitudes, the university is no longer a university. It's given it, it's given its, 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 its responsibility uh, up here. And so how it takes on then this, this Mandela, I think we see important lessons in both uh, what these legacy uh, organizations uh, have, have done. Both of these legacy organizations have tried to come to a clear understanding of what it is that they are about. Uh, 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 what it is that, that their mandate uh, uh, specifically uh, charges uh, them with. Uh, and to think that mandate through, if you like, the prism of Mandela. Uh, that, that mandate has to be interpreted through the prism uh, of what Mandela is, is all about. And this is where the difficulty for the university is, because the university is this complex place that has to then move itself through this, this this complex prism of this, this uh, in, individual. Uh, and as it does so, it, it has reflected back to it a whole multiplicity of things, and it has to find a way of dealing with this. And this is where uh, I think the challenge uh, to the university is it's easy now simply to be in that honoring mode. It's easy. 
you know, it's easy to, to take on exactly what these other universities have done and to uh, institute this, this, this annual uh, event uh, in, in Mandela's honor. But the much more difficult thing is to, to think about how does this prism uh, impact on how we teach, uh, on what we teach, uh, what is it that we uh, um, make the subjects and the objects of uh, our research, how we do that, how we manage this relationship between the university and its networks of engagement. And they really are complicated uh, questions. My, my, my anxiety is, and I've been very fortunate in the last while to be looking at the strategic plans of many universities. Um, I, I'm, I've just written a, a, a paper around this, uh, and, it's, and it's really disappointing to see how universities are all actually mimicking each other. They, they are taking their strategic plans and are all using the same kinds of words. You're not seeing the distinctiveness of what those universities are, are all about. But I'd like to make the point about that. It's difficult to take specificity and the specificity of a name and to filter that through uh, what it is that you do and how you do it. And this is, this is, this is, this is where we are, I think, Vern. Um, thanks, that's all I, I, I'm adding in reflection and to thank Judy and, and Celo uh, for um, those really inspirational inputs. Um, and, and I, like you, uh, um, uh, still, I left uh, still feeling those goosebumps, my brother. Thanks. Thank you, Crane. Uh, Judy, um, any any response from you to 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 Silo's, um, input, um, but also uh, picking up on um, that question of of the shift in logo for 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 Mandela Roads. What did that signify? Um, internally, but also in terms of how you want to communicate with your constituencies and your publics. Thanks, Vern. Yeah, I really resonate with a lot of what Selo spoke to. I think particularly the question of the name belonging to everyone who shares the vision. Um, and, 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 and I really like that because I think then it allows for Mandela to be of the people, you know? I mean, when we think about in 2003, when Madiba was making um, the found, the opening up of the foundation um, speech at Westminster Hall, um, you know, he said by combining our name with that of Cecil John Rhodes symbolizes a closing of a circle of history. So I always ask my scholars, Mandela is the subject why would he say combining our name? It is because you also have to go back 30 years and remember when he came out of prison and he was standing at the city hall, he made the point that on that day, he was dedicating the name Mandela to the people. So Selo's point here, I think is very crucial to remind us that for Madiba, the minute he stepped out of prison, he always knew and understood the symbolism of the name and that it was not his, but the people's. And so this, this idea then of those who share in the vision of those values and principles um, can and have uh, rights to the name. So to your question about branding, yes, so we as an organization, I went through a kind of about a 12 to 18 month consultation process uh, really going deeply into understanding how do we communicate who we are, what we're about, how we understood, and how do we make sure that the actual values um, and the work that we do can be expressed through our branding and our logo. And so after um, consultation with various stakeholders, um, to bringing in a brand consultant who actually try to almost help us understand who's the customer, right? If you kind of use business speak, who is the customer? Well, the customer is the, the student who went to, you know, to university in Rosemont Hall. It's the student who's sitting in Accra, who's sitting at University of Makerere, who's sitting in University of Nairobi. And they are 
our, 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 our target audience is um, the millennials and Gen Zs, but increasingly Gen Zs as um, the millennials get older. I'm now I'm now considered like very old, you know, with our students as part of the millennials. <laughs> and so there's a very interesting um, profile in understanding this generation, and this is the generation that universities are dealing with, right? They have no regard for institutional history and institutional esteem. For them, it's about why must I put my name next to your brand? Um, uh, uh, and what does this brand actually stand for? So we recognize that we had to be very clear in the way in which we communicate who we are. Uh, and we also went and looked at our historical documents. So we went back and, and, and asked, what did Mandela envision this organization to be? And are we communicating that accordingly? So you'll see that in our, in our, in our rebranded um, logo, you actually have the face of Mandela, but what forms that face? are small circles that uh, each represent a Mandela Road Scholar. So the idea is seeds of change, that each Mandela Road Scholar in their unique way are contributing to a facet of Mandela's legacy and that collectively as Mandela Road Scholars, they are going out into our African society and are actually creating the impact. They're almost the physical expressions of that legacy through the fields such as astrophysics to form to the creative arts um, to law to finance and a reimagining of those spaces and a reimagining of those sectors so we yeah we, we were very proud of the process we went through because ironically and this is what people people say in doing the the the, the research and doing the focus groups and doing the interviews and was actually saying, how do we harness the power of being a Mandela legacy organization and drawing on that strength? And implicit in that, of course, is that part of Mandela's legacy was about reaching out across the divides. And that's what the Rhodes element speaks to, but that Rhodes the man, Rhodes the person himself actually wasn't something that spoke to how we wanted to publicly express ourselves, but rather the call to say, we are willing to work together across divides in making Mandela's vision a reality. Sure, thank you. Um, I, I, I want to um, connect what you've just said to, to a thread that you offered in your initial input, Judy, um, and then invite um, Prof. Andre Kier to come in as well, because if I heard you correctly, um, you were suggesting that for, for any of us, um, for any institution, a liberatory identity has to do with our capacity to allow the shadow um, space, right? Um, to acknowledge and even befriend the stranger that we all carry inside, right? Um, and I see um, that's been picked up by by um, Andre. Andre, do you want to actually come in and talk to it, or shall we just pose the question from the chat to Judy? Let's uh, pose the question as is, verse. That would be great. Thanks, Judy. Uh, Judy? Yeah, very good question. I think so. I think we have to be honest with ourselves that at an individual level, at a societal level, how do we see this juxtaposition of Mandela and Rhodes speaking to the best parts of ourselves as a society and also the worst parts of ourselves? And, 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 and what does it mean to reconcile those? You know, So my background is in psychology. And the thing is, the shadow is always going to be there. As you, even as you, you watch yourself walking, every time you try to run away from your shadow, it, it, it follows you. So, so what does it mean for us to imagine a world in which we, for example, can recognize that there will always be inequality, but the question is, to what extent is that inequality acceptable or not, right? Do we want to be living in a society where we are the most unequal in the world? Or is it saying we reduce inequality to a point where, you know, the, it's, 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 
looking at those more acceptable standards in every society, even those that are quite egalitarian, there will still be a little bit of those who are a bit more wealthy and those who are not. The problem in, in our context in South Africa is that the gap is so large, the gap is so inhumane. And so how do we, especially those of us who are sitting here, who are able to have these conversations, how do we recognize the roads in us that continues to perpetuate these systems, that continue to perpetuate these structures because we benefit from it, right? And the question is, are we willing to lose the benefits of the access to power that we have as those who are sitting here? And that's part of what it would mean to kind of face that inner shadow and that inner demon. Um, and I think sometimes, we don't want to have that conversation because it's easy to point. We, we've got the evidence uh, as the as our scholars say, we have the receipts, right? So we have the receipts. We can easily point to why it is that we can point at the other. But how do we reflect on our own complicity in the injustices that we continue to see? Thank you, Judy. I, I want to offer that that question to Sillo as well, this question of the stranger inside, um, especially for an organization carrying the name Mandela. You know, uh, the, the uh, I, I think the, it, it, it's such a challenge because as, uh, as Judy used the word of uh, being implicated, it reminded me of uh, our dialogue last night with the with uh, madam uh, ben suda uh, about how uh, one needs to acknowledge that by by virtue of even just leading the nelson mandela foundation um you are you are already implicated in some way to the uh, what's considered to be wrong with our society um i remember when i when i joined the nmf um, a few a few people told Vern and I, in fact, both of us, they said, uh, you've crossed the floor um, uh, to the other side because uh, the, the name Mandela is so big and the Nelson Mandela Foundation, the work that uh, it's been doing uh, by implication is always associated with corporate. Um, with the other side that uh, uh, that uh, kind of uh, is the extracts. And how do you make sure that the institution um, does not live up to that kind of, uh, of uh, reputation is the question. I have to tell you that uh, uh, as, as a father, a, a husband, and in all these roles that I occupy, the most difficult is being CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Um, and of course, it's one that I, I, I feel honored by, but uh, the heaviness that it comes with, um, it's, uh, it's, it's one that one doesn't uh, uh, take for granted. And, and when uh, uh, Prof Sudin in his response now was talking about mandate and specificity of the mandate, the expectation that you must be a Mandela is always there. Um, there's something that's happening uh, you, you, uh, it's, someone says, no, but the, uh, Madiba would have done this. Uh, Madiba wouldn't have um, uh, said what you said. And, and, uh, and in a way, it's the heaviness that comes with that legacy, um, that complex legacy uh, that you can't just uh, single it out to, into one element and leave others. So, so I, I, I was watching, Judy, when I said the most uh, difficult position is being CEO of the foundation. And I, I have no doubt that it's the same for you too, um, because there's, one is honored, but you are, you are also uh, carrying the heavy burden. Um, because Madiba's name can bring out the best and the worst in, in people. Um, I, I've seen it uh, does both. And in institutions too, um, that it does um, uh, bring out the best and the worst um, in people. Thanks, Beno. And do you want to come in on this and connect it to um, a point you were making about the university? As I, as I understood you, you were saying that the idea of the university is fundamentally about an embrace of complexity, right? Um, do you want to connect that to this notion of, of the stranger inside? 
uh, in relation to the name Mandela specifically? Well, so this is a point that I, 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 um, I try to make quite often about the uh, distinctiveness of uh, this place uh, uh, called the university. Um, so lots of people, when they talk about the university, they talk about the university as uh, in Western terms, in this Western discourse of, 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 of um, what the university is all about, as the, uh, the, the institution that has been able to uh, uh, survive, endure in ways in which uh, other institutions uh, haven't. And, um, um, and uh, I, I take that, that characterization of the university with a little bit of anxiety um, um, because the university has changed quite dramatically in purpose uh, over this, 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 this last period. It's only really in the last say 150 and 200 years that the university, uh, uh, and this is particularly as a result of of, of these developments that have happened uh, after the, uh, particularly, you know, the move from feudalism to uh, this republican sense of, 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 of the this, this, this state. Um, in, that, in that move, there was also a, 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 a development happening in the university. Uh, and yeah, Andre is anticipating what I'm going to say. Um, um, uh, where the university declared itself as being a place which is uh, structured in openness to always be receiving uh, uh, and, and, and not simply reproducing and conserving, always receiving. Um, and and, um, and uh, I, I think universities have struggled to live up to that particular way of, of, of understanding themselves because the instinct of most people in the university is to plant a, 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 a stake in the ground and, and not to move from it, to hold on to it. Um, uh, but, but actually, um, if you take this uh, change that happened uh, 150 years ago uh, to, to openness, it's an invitation to constantly be renewing uh, yourself. And I'd like to think that in the way in which, you know, we've been talking about um, uh, uh, about uh, Tata Mandela yeah, is about that renewal, is about that capacity to be uh, renewing uh, uh, the ways in which you come to uh, problems, to engage with problems, to uh, uh, think about problems uh, uh, all the time. And, and that's uh, as a distinguishing mark, you know, quite an extraordinary thing, actually. You know, so you can say lots of things about about Mr. Mandela, um, uh, but it's this this capacity to, uh, uh, to to bring that understanding of him in alignment with this disruptive possibility of the university, uh, which emerges. Uh, Around about 1860 and, 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 and so on, uh, is, is, is really quite uh, uh, an incredible, uh, incredibly fertile thing to be to be uh, to be thinking about. Thank you, Crane. Um, I see a question that we we haven't um, addressed, um, which was the first question posed, and it was specifically to you, Crane. Uh, about the use of the acronym NMU. Um, and it's an interesting one for the Nelson Mandela Foundation, I think, because there is also a discussion about when do we talk about the NMF and when do we talk about the foundation? I think with Mandela Rhodes, there was also a discussion, not so much about acronym, but uh, about the use of the definite article, the, with a capital T. Um, Crane, is, is this a significant question for you? I hadn't thought about it, but 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 we are just to say to you, yes, I, 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 I think so. I think it is going to be almost essential for uh, certainly the next period before one gets 
uh, into uh, the, the, this easy and acronymic way, let me introduce another word, acronymic uh, way of, 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 of speaking about uh, the university. It's, it's, it's really important to be deliberate about saying the Mandela University. You know, to be deliberate about holding the name itself uh, um, uh, in the spotlight, uh, if only to problematize it. So, so, so never to let it uh, settle and 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 become established in a way which, which, which does that thing of of of, of, of if if you like, uh, asserting a a, a single uh, narrative authority. Uh, which silences and 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 allows allows disruption. You know, it's it's really important uh, uh, going into this for this for this for this uh, disruption to be a feature of how the university you know holds on to this thing of 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 of, of uh, welcoming uh, of welcoming the strangeness uh, in, in 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 oneself. Let me just say about JNU. The tragedy about JNU now is that JNU has been captured, and this is a, a really desperate moment. You know, people who are inside of JNU right now are crying out for global help, and it's almost a moment in which, you know, we ought to be reaching out to uh, colleagues who, who are inside of the university because nationalism has overridden the ways in which the university is is. Is, 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 is being governed. Its name means nothing right now. You know, right now that name has absolutely uh, no, no significance. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, in the way in which you've just said it here, Vern, does JNU allow you to do that instead of calling it by its full name? I don't know. Sure, thanks, Crane. I, I see um, Andre uh, Kiet has his hand up. Andre, do you want to come in on this? Point? Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, in fact, and I'm just taking uh, you know, chances um, because I to get into the conversation, I'm sorry, colleagues. Um, the one is, uh, and, and this covers actually Crane, Cello, and Judy Vern. You say the, the, we have to worry about uh, what kind of collective futures can be imagined. Uh, you know, from the from this historical moment onwards, uh, and I'll come back in my closing remarks to the uh, issue of the name change. But I'm just taking advantage of the notion of complexity and complicity that has been brought into the space. And uh, I I thought that 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 one of the reasons why that uh, that collective future. You, you know, more or less sidesteps our imagination from time to time is because we do not want to acknowledge that we have a messy history, you know, a, a history within which, within which the categories of perpetrators, victims, bystanders, and beneficiaries are so intertwined and interlinked with even in one person, you know, you, you know, though history, of course, distribute different forms of guilt and responsibility differentially. And that is the task of history. Uh, and sometimes I think that uh, we want to have a much more cleaner analysis of history and not one of complexity and complicity. And, and for that very reason, that very, the idea of a collective future that can be imagined, uh, you know, across the lines uh, that Judy put on the table is something that is so difficult to fathom, you know, uh, because we, we are literally producing a future of binaries, even if social reality tells us that that is not the way in which the world is working. It's a, it's a quite, quite something that, yeah, it just troubles, uh, you know, some of these things in my head. Uh, so if the three can, panelists can respond to it, that would be nice. Thank you. So thank you, Andre. You know, I'm mindful of time. We're moving into the last 15 minutes and I'm wondering, 
um, it's a beautiful question uh, that Andre poses, um, is maybe we could go around the panel and give each one of you a, a, a bite at that question, but also sort of concluding reflections before we then hand over finally to Andre uh, to wrap our conversation. Um, Crane, maybe start with you. Yeah, so, so, so to hold on to Andre's uh, 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 characterization of the complexity, uh, um, um, and, 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 and to say that, you know, we can't do otherwise. Um, I mean, if we don't find the methodologies uh, in an institution like the university to be exploring how to make sense of this complexity, uh, um, the, the university becomes something else. You know, it, it, it becomes a reproductive institution for one kind of power uh, or the other. Um, uh, and, uh, and we've got to, at all costs, be resisting uh, that. Um, now, it's, uh, uh, as Andre says, it's, 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 it's not easy, but it's the issue of our times, because our times are written, uh, the narrative of our times, uh, particularly this Eurocentric narrative that we have uh, inherited, uh, that narrative is written in such uh, um, determinative kinds of languages that it's, it, it's the fate of African people to uh, be where they are. And we can't accept that. We really can't. I and mean, we have to find ways of disrupting that in deep, deep kinds of ways. Uh, and so figures like Mandela aren't incidental in the struggle for uh, solving the global problem of, uh, of, of, of injustice and, 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 and inequality. I and mean, the burden of, of, of that name is, 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 is so heavy now uh, but it doesn't in itself provide uh, the pathways for how uh, we come to give expression to, to these pathways. And, and, and that's our responsibility now, you know, and it's an, and it's an incredible responsibility. You know, it's one which, which I, I'd like to say that I am absolutely privileged to be a part of, but it intimidates the heck out of me. Thanks. Thank you, Crane. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded as you speak and, and what you've just said is, is so similar in a way to what Silu was saying earlier. And, and Judy was nodding her head as Silu was saying. Um, it reminds me of the moment when the university, the, the, the then University of Port Elizabeth, um, put in an application to Madiba uh, to use his name. And I remember the discussions that went on at the time, and my question was, why on earth would they want to take on that burden? Um, it's, it's such a heavy one to carry. Um, but I'll leave it there and circle around now to Judy. Do you want to offer some concluding remarks? Just remembering that thread that, that um, Andres offered us. Certainly. Um, Verna, I do think those of us who take on this name have a streak of masochism. <laughs> because indeed it is both the deepest privilege and also many sleepless nights here. Um, but I think if we can hold on to the call of the name, um, the, the higher purpose that it, it invokes in all of us to do the work daily in building this country, in building this continent uh, to, to, to the vision that Mandela and his, pre and his predecessors had, then it makes, it makes the work all the more worth it. I think to comment on Andre's point about how we continue to deal with those inner complexities, Mandela himself, right, uh, we all know, had said, 
I am not a saint. He pushed back on this idealization uh, that people had towards him. He said, I'm not a saint, unless you think of a saint as a sinner who keeps on trying. So I think uh, a big part of what moves us forward uh, as individuals and as a society is when we can name within ourselves. Um, I always, you know, my wife and I always talk about the 1% rule. So even if I'm 99% convinced that I am right and she's completely being an idiot in this situation, I have to say, okay, but how do I listen to the potential of 1% of truth in what she's saying to me about the feedback I need to take on how I need to change my behavior. Because as we know, systems theory teaches us that there are multiple components in every system. And it is actually the, 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 the sum of the interactions um, that creates what that reality is. So I think we all have to continue to reflect on what our role is as individuals in maintaining the systems of inequality that we are all unhappy with. And then also see that that gives us power, that we can show up in a different way. We can show up um, in a way that actually creates more space for people on the table. Um, and very privileged that I get to do that kind of work in Madiba's name, allowing for young people who really want to uh, reimagine these systems and structures and want to do it with heart and mind and soul. So from an integrated place. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, Silo, over to you. I, I, I didn't, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get uh, Andres' question uh, because uh, I got cut off. Um, rather, I lost the network at, at some point. So sorry, Andre, but I, I hear it's about the uh, complexity. And I was just uh, trying to rather living with complexity of uh, the name that we're carrying. It's trying to remember, uh, when there's a letter that Madiba wrote to Mamwini, um, and uh, he, he was writing to her to say that uh, something about uh, a prison cell is the best place for you to uh, meditate, uh, where you can take time out to think about um, uh, what you might have gotten wrong. Um, but then he went further and said something about how in, in us, uh, there's, uh, there's that uh, pure human soul that lives in us, but there's this magwen that keeps eating away at that goodness. Um, and I think if we are to take that letter as, uh, as something to, that could be maybe instructive about uh, Andres' uh, question is to, to embrace complexity, to know that uh, in good, you also have bad. Um, that um, Adiba's reflection of it also is, is uh, precisely that, that you must embrace it, um, but try your, your best to make sure that it doesn't cause damage um, to those you are trying to help, in other words. And, and I, I'm tempted to say that institutions that carry this name should always remember that. You can't always get it right, but try your best um, to, to do that. Um, you know, Judy said something about uh, um, how the privilege that comes with uh, names also has this, uh, it, 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 it comes with benefits. And I see uh, uh, we are also um, going there. Are we, are we ready to lose the, uh, ready and willing to lose the benefits um, that come with it? And that's the part of the complexity too because um, uh, it, it gives you a great space to be able to convene people that uh, many struggle to convene. And by virtue of the name, you can call people to come into the auditorium and do what Madiba told Ahmad, um, that the dialogue uh, should be not only about those who are uh, doing a chat, but that it should be about those who don't want to see each other. And by virtue of using the name, you can always bring um, the, uh, all that together. So that's the benefit and the privilege that comes with it. And to, to all of us, we must embrace that complexity and work with it um, and, uh, and uh, try our best to make it uh, live up to the values that Madiba uh, left for us and the legacy that he was trying to leave for us. Thanks, Veno. 
Oh, thank you so much. So we move into the last few minutes now, and I want to hand over to, to Prof. Kiet uh, for concluding remarks. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know Andre, um, he's, he's an activist. He's one of South Africa's foremost transformation thinkers and, and practitioners. Uh, he's what I call a super bureaucrat as well. I don't know how he juggles so many balls and does it so efficiently. Um, I first met you, Andre, uh, when you were at the Human Rights Commission, right, about 20 years ago. And then our paths have just kept crossing in the University of the Free State, several projects there. It's wonderful to be in the same intellectual and institutional space as you. Um, and so over to you for those last reflections. Thank you. No, no, thanks. Thanks, Vern and colleagues. And of course, a great always to be connected, you know, and, um, and have time now, you know, to spend, uh, you know, uh, not so frequent as we would like, you know, with Cello, yourself, Crane and Judy and other colleagues as well. We always promise ourselves we will have a great reunion one of these days in Joburg, you know, let's see how that plays itself out. There was also another story about the fact that um, I was traumatized because I only have one name, you know, I don't have a middle name, but that's a, that's a discussion that we can have for another time as well. And that's, you know, the, the personal elements of naming, you know, because I'm coming from this massive family. But the, this was so fascinating. And you know that the questions, uh, Crane, uh, that perhaps is difficult to formulate, is that the proposition of the Mandela name creates those difficulties, okay? And so the twin imperatives of both complexity and complicity, okay? So it's complexity and complicity. In fact, there is value also to work with what people would call a negative concepts, you know, like guilt and so forth within these different sets of spaces that we will hold together. And so VCC Bongile, you know, as you know, she so often does, you know, locating the key question for Mandela University about the name in this space in such a skillful way. Um, and, you know, there's a sense almost, you know, like that for all the other important questions about the university, this is probably perhaps the crucial one, you know, it stands proxy for all the other primary questions the university is asking of itself, you know, or about itself, you know. If you look at those two examples that Crane have mentioned, of course, one has to try and work, you know, towards the edges of what they offer in, in ways in which the university can be reimagined, you know, without faculties, you know, uh, different web like schools, the structures are reconfigured because form is also a, a very, very powerful uh, artifact of reproduction, you know, so we have to think about how those forms can be destabilized. So that question of VCC Bongine is, of course, it reframes in the context of the council piece, you know, the question of teaching and learning, research and engagement, and in a sense, you know, almost like a challenge around the idea of the university itself, you know, what does it mean to be a university in Crane's term, of course, in our post-colonial reality, but how do we do this? Né? And this is the question that scares us all. Né? Um, and so it is, in a sense, the university wants to sidestep the impulse of honoring and branding, and it wants to dive into the substantive academic expression of what the name Mandela may mean. But, but what is that springboard? From where does it jump, you know? You know, knocking together a, a branding strategy, Crane, as you would say, is as easy as spending a few weeks together with one another. But doing the other substantive work behind that strategy is, of course, the key thing that we need to do. And it's not a bad idea to be scary about it, eh? to be unsettled by those big questions that needs to be asked so that we know that we don't have the answers, you know, that we know that we go in there blind, you know, and that we have to read uh, and engage, you know, with so many people across the space. So even as, if there are no strong models to how critically work with the name that one takes for oneself, very little guidance, not even in the 
international space, but it does provide for a great framework for locating the debate, no? so rooted in scholarly engagement, so that the so that the debate has a substantive, you know, rock, you know, from which it ensues the different sets of complexities and complicities. And so for our university ourselves, of course, we have given that complexity the idea of Mandela as an academic expression within the university space. And I think that intuitively we're on the right track. Um, Crane also indicates that the, that the university's attempts at this seems to go in the right direction, okay? And so Judy and Sello also takes forward the idea of how can the power of the Mandela name be worked with? And perhaps the power of the Mandela name and its opposites be worked with, you know, because it's not only about the Mandela name, but also what its opposites represents. And how back to Crane, of course, how the form of the conventional university is a primary reproductive agent within that space. So for all three of you, of course, the reimagination of humanity is a key function of working with the name Mandela. But say, no, of course, in a non-proprietary way. Né? So you, you, you walk with that sealed uh, suitcase to Scotland, thinking that you're going to knock people over the head because they're using the Mandela name, only to realize that the name doesn't belong to you and the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Okay? <laughs> That's a wonderful story, okay? And so non-proprietary ways, in fact, it is the things that we give away that makes us rich, né? as you would know. So, um, and so non-proprietary relations should be part of our way. And in fact, it is possibly some, there is an element of value in the idea of giving, of taking the name and giving it away consistently, né? like taking it, giving it away in a cyclical form. So Karen, I was thinking about this idea, does naming in universities perhaps not mean the responsibility for doing like perpetual, you know, never ending critical work to work against the name, you know, and then with the name and then beyond the name, okay? And so that's an element of, so, so that the name doesn't become a badge, you know? But the, the name becomes a reflective mirror, you know, within which the university then views itself. So, and of course, we are working beyond the name itself because there is an ideal that there would be a limit to the social figure of Mandela, which needs to be pushed further because it will be a construction of its time, you know, within history. And how do we use what is there to push the idea of that name beyond our present horizons of Mandela or our present horizons of our social reality at the limits of our academic imaginations, you know, over the edge, you know, falling into what may be lightness or darkness or whatever that may mean. So there must be a perpetual, a permanent battle with the name that one takes on, eh? a permanent contestation with the name of Mandela itself. I don't talk about a, a soft, fluffy embrace, you know? That's, that's not what I'm referring to at all because that is what will lead you into the easy honoring of the name uh, that Crane think we should try and move away from. So rather the taking up of a name as preparing for a difficult encounter, eh? a, a struggle with the idea of taking the name itself, yeah, okay? So those politics, uh, the three of you uh, with Vern uh, and the vice chancellor's introduction has been fascinating colleagues. So I, I you know, even though uh, the vice chancellor will know that we have a long road, you know, on this permanent battle with the name that we have taken on, it is a name that we, we are prepared to travel, you know, uh, like the endless, relentless pursuit of bringing an intellectual angle to this figure of justice. So gladly enough, we don't think of the taking up the name as an event, okay? As something that happened in 2017. And that should be clear for the panelists, you know, that our university uh, are not in that space, you know, uh, of a name that has been taken up in a particular year and that's it. So we have a, a journey to code travel colleagues, a long one. Um, it's going to last much longer than our time in this futures. Uh, with a name we already have, 
uh, but one which we are yet to earn uh, with all its contradictions, complexities, and complicities, you know, and pushing those boundaries, different kinds of ways. So thanks to all of you for making this such a beautiful event. So just a few thanks. Uh, Prof. Bongle, thanks as always so much for driving this idea, as you would know, and as in Crane's paper as well, the piece that you and your predecessor put together is actually a, you know, a beginning point for this particular discussion. Vern, you have been a great friend of this university for a very long time. We are grateful, okay? You know, for all those reasons, and the same goes for you, Crane. Uh, fantastic having you in the space. Judy, it was so great, you know, having you joining us today. So we hope that we can, we can walk of, you know, different sets of paths with different sets of complexities together as we move ahead. And then Cello, uh, it's great, it's great, you know, to still be able to look to the side and see you there, you know, after all these years. I get a bit tired of your voice on TV, but that's, uh, you know, something that I, I have to do. That's, that's a personal thing that I have to deal with, okay? So leave that to me, uh, but it's great, okay? If one looks to the left and to the right, that there you are, you know, with all the work that you do in the foundation. And of course, for all the participants staying this discussion, fantastic and great, okay, colleagues. So wonderful, Jane, Amy, and the team. I'm not just sure, Azra as well. And the, I just hope that I don't leave anybody out here. And I know Laura has been involved here also very deeply within this project and process. Thanks so much for holding this together in the ways that you do. Colleagues, this brings to an end this wonderful discussion on the name Mandela. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. Thanks, colleagues. Thank you so much. You sounded like a broadcaster there for a second. Uh -huh. What? You sounded, like, you sounded like a broadcaster there for a second. Oh. <laughs> Thanks,